All right, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're joining us today for another edition of our EIM Research Learning Collaborative webinar and presentation series. Really excited to have all of you join us live. We will be recording this and posting it to our website afterwards um, for anyone who misses or wants to review what we go over today. A uh, very special topic today. It's our first time we've gone international with the EIM RLC. And uh, today's journey takes us to Sweden, uh, where we will be looking at the Swedish physical activity on prescription program and some medical treatment for a uh, medical treatment method in their healthcare systems. So just before we get started, I always like to start with a little reminder of what our goals and mission are with the EIM RLC. So uh, remember that the RLC is really an initiative to bring together peers, and researchers, and practitioners, and all of us together to share and apply best practices from both the academic research community, but also people on the front line working in health systems, working in communities, and fuse everyone together to figure out how we can do research better related to EIM. Um, this, this RLC focuses on dissemination, adoption, adoption, and adaptation of best practices for integrating physical activity into diverse health systems. So not just large health uh, hospitals, but also community health clinics and, and, and anything in between. Um, in the end, we want to increase capacity of you all to um, develop research that really um, expands the evidence base, showing that physical activity assessment and promotion as a standard in healthcare um, can really increase physical activity for people everywhere and of all abilities. So if you wanna, if you haven't joined, um, just search on the internet for EIM RLC. There's a link there you can join and make sure you get all of our communications. So next I wanna just go briefly over exercises medicine, just make sure we're all on the same page. Um, and, and really get the message out about our vision, which is making physical activity assessment and promotion a standard in clinical care, connecting healthcare with evidence-based physical activity resources for people everywhere and of all abilities. And we really do this through a systems approach, really looking at structural and policy changes to affect standards in healthcare, and you'll see that again today, integrating assessment and referral pathways into the electronic health record and committing to build this bridge of trust between the health systems and our community physical activity resources to really benefit our patients. So within the healthcare system, we really look at three main steps, which is our uh, somewhat analogous to a uh, expert model for uh, substance use. And this is really a routine physical activity assessment and screening, followed by brief advice and counseling or delivery of a physical activity prescription. And finally, a referral of patients to physical activity resources. So today we're really honing in on this uh, physical activity prescription part as they do it and have adapted uh, for their use in Sweden. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to um, our speaker today will describe the development of the physical activity on prescription program from its initial start uh, to a program that's now in nine different countries across Europe. And our very um, special speaker, we're so honored to have you here today, Dr. Stefan Lundquist, um, who's a PhD in physiotherapy. He works in the method development and implementation of the Swedish POP in the Center for Physical Activity in Gothenburg. Um, he conducts this work throughout Gothenburg at his university, uh, at Gothenburg University. And he's also a member of the Swedish Professional Association for Physical Activity, produces many important documents, um, both on physical activity and with the Swedish Society of Medicine. So I'm going to stop my share and turn it over to Dr. Lundqvist. I'm sorry, I'm Stefan, I'm pronouncing No, no, no problem. <laughs> it, it's, it's, not so, it's not so simple, uh, I think. Uh, now we shall see. So. I get it from the right point here. I think it's here. Mm. So, okay, Mark and everyone, can you see the pictures? Yes, we can. Yeah, okay. 
Very nice. Thank you very much. And thank you, the EIM organization and uh, Mark Stoltenberg for having in, inviting me here today for this webinar. It's rather exciting to uh, suddenly be being uh, in some way uh, over the oceans uh, to you in, in, in the States. Uh, and I, uh, I also recognize that uh, two of my Swedish colleagues are with, uh, with us here, Heli and, and Annie. So um, uh, uh, we are exciting for for this uh, for this uh, hour one hour that we have to have together here now. Uh, I should give you a, a little a brief uh, uh, expose over over the the work with the physical activity on prescription as as we do it in Sweden. Uh, and uh, I work uh, in my in my organization. Uh, that is Center for Physical Activity in Gothenburg to implement and educate in, uh, in the Swedish PAP, uh, PAP model. And my research is about physical activity on prescription in primary care. Uh, and um, I, I heard that Mark is, is recording, so, so you can uh, have the web, uh, web address to uh, pick it up if you want to read a little more about the Swedish PAP. It's actually uh, quite... Uh, quite actual uh, report in in my uh, in my dissertation uh, but uh, what, what about swedish pap tre treatment does it uh, really work uh, we know from from a swedish per perspective that the counseling in, in combination with a written prescription is better than just talk about physical activity and uh, to have an active patient in the planning and the goal setting and in all parts of uh, of, of this process, it's so so uh, it's so important, and actually we have a, a very positive attitude from patients in Sweden to to the PAP. Uh, the research shows us that uh, eighty five to ninety five uh, percent of the patients are really positive to to uh, uh, that that we engage uh, with the, the living living habits and, and physical activity in in the healthcare. And actually, we have. A rather, rather high compliance for for the PAP. Uh, we have a, we have, a, have a high higher uh, compliance than for for uh, compared to, for example, long term drug treatment that doesn't reach over fifty percent in Sweden. And uh, our Swedish uh, research shows uh, uh, numbers between uh, 52, 55 up to seventy three percent of of compliance. And what results do we have? Well, we can see that the patients are increasing the PL level and the physical activity level, and they increase the physical capacity. And we actually uh, published a study uh, a week ago there where we can uh, see increased uh, fitness level too. Uh, we see a re reduced sedentary time and reduced cardiometabolic factors, uh, risk factors. Uh, it's uh, the, the most research is done in, in primary healthcare, where the cardio and, meta and metabolic risk factors are, are very common. Uh, and we see increased uh, life quality and, uh, and self efficacy. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, for three years uh, ago, we conducted a systematic review. Uh, with the question, does Swedish PAP increase physical activity level? And uh, the answer was yes, there is evidence for the Swedish PAP to increase uh, physical activity level. And, and that's actually the primary outcome because we know the evidence is clear that if we increase physical activity, uh, we have positive health effects. So that's, that's, a, uh, that's a really important uh, an important uh, result and at this, it has been very important for us to, to show that Swedish PAP really increased the physical activity level. So the conclusion here is that Swedish PAP may be considered as part of re regular healthcare to increase physical activity in, in, uh, uh, in patients that are insufficiently uh, physical active. Uh, we have national guidelines. The authorities in Sweden, they, have, they do uh, national guidelines, and this is for the prevention and treatment for unhealthy living habits. And uh, we have, we have uh, these national guidelines for physical activity, tobacco, alcohol, and eating habits. Uh, and uh, 
these guidelines says that we should have uh, individualized uh, counseling, uh, written, written, written prescription, and an organized follow-up. We all also have, we have 21 regions in Sweden that uh, uh, have the responsibility for the healthcare. And in almost uh, all regions today, we have regional medical guidelines for physical activity. And this is what you see here is, is uh, the guideline for, for us in the Västra Götalands region uh, with, a, with a population of uh, 1.7 million. And we have a very important uh, scientific handbook, the FIS, Physical Activity in the Prevention and Treatment of Disease. And uh, this is a very, very important um, uh, book for us because it's, it's a sort of physical activity manual for, for us in healthcare. So you can read about the evidence we have for, for uh, uh, support the patient to increase the physical activity. There are lots, lots of diagnosed uh, chapters in this book. Uh, how, how do we, what, what, what evidence do we have for uh, increasing physical activity for diabetes type 2, for depression, uh, for atrocities, and so on and so on. We, we have tried to really organize the way we, uh, we work with, uh, with uh, PAP here in Sweden and to make it, I think, as so simple as possible, uh, both for uh, our colleagues and for the patients. And um, the, the pup, uh, pup treatment is a part of the uh, person-centered perspective, and it, it consists of an individual uh, consultation and tailored physical activity with a written prescription and an individualized follow-up. That's the three, the three core elements of uh, of the pup treatment. Uh, it's not rocket science. It's much more complicated than that. Of course, we are, we are dealing with living material with human beings. So we never know what it ends up in. Uh, but with, so with, it's so important that we have an organized way to, to do this. And PAP is, as a method is used as the first line treatment and uh, as an alternative or complement to pharma pharmaceuticals. And we, of course, we want to, to have the health benefits and the risk reduction and reduced pharmaceuticals. We have a, lot, uh, a long way to go here in Sweden to uh, actually get the, um, the doctors uh, on the road to, to try to reduce uh, pharmaceutical pharmacadoses uh, for patients who are who are increasing their, their physical activity. And of course, health economical effects, the, the politicians are very, very interested of this. What is unique with the Swedish PAP treatment? Well, I have understand that this is perhaps the most uh, exciting part, that all licensed healthcare professionals working in the healthcare system with adequate expertise can offer PAP treatment. So uh, uh, me as a physiotherapist, uh, the psychologist, the dietist, uh, uh, the nurses, uh, the doctors, uh, we are all uh, licensed healthcare professionals and we can, in our license is a responsible, a possibility and a responsibility to actually offer best practice for our patients. And of course, uh, this re requires knowledge of the patient's health status and condition and how to use physical activity in prevention and, and treatment of diseases. And here we use the FIS book, uh, the PAP method and, and local routines for that. And behavior change approach. We use, uh, it's very common that we use motivational interviewing. That's, that is a part of the transtheoretical uh, model. Uh, and uh, we have to have knowledge about uh, activity associations and gyms, uh, wellness centers, and so on, uh, that we can discuss with our patients to find a, a, a reasonable solution to, to increase the physical activity. And the counseling and the prescription, the, 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 the tailored physical activity that, that we write in the prescri prescri prescription, uh, it's actually based on the patient's health status and level of function. 
And we have to know something about previous experience about physical activity. We have a lot of patients that have bad experience and we have to know something about the current uh, physical activity level. Uh, and the readiness to change the motivation and self-efficacy, we have to measure or talk about it. And what the patient is interested in, is there any enjoyment? It's, it's an important issue. And what may be possible to do? And what, what, are, what is the, the environment support and the patient's uh, uh, health economic status, uh, social, social economic status is, is important too and perhaps potential risk factors. We have to deal with all, all these uh, parts. And when we come to the individualized follow-up, it's based on the patient's self-efficacy, motivation and readiness to change, and also the prior experiences. Uh, and we say that individuals considered by the healthcare to be in need of increased physical activity to prevent and or treat disease could have up here in Sweden. So actually we have a lot of work to do and I know you have a lot of work to do too. Uh, in Sweden uh, perhaps 35 to 50 percent of the Swedish people are insufficiently physical active and uh, 20 percent are sedentary over 10, 10 uh, hours per day. And in, uh, in my region uh, I think uh, half percent of the patients that are listed on their uh, um, that are listed at the healthcare center uh, gets up during a year. So uh, we have a, we, we are needed, all of us, to, to do this job. And the question is, when, when do we start with PAP treatment? Uh, yeah, uh, the earlier the better, uh, as first treatment, of course, uh, but it, it could come as a complement to other treatment or pharmaceutical or rehabilitation or it could come at, at the end of a treatment time or a rehabilitation time. It's better that it comes in, in the end than, than that it, it never is actual. Uh, so so it's, uh, I say to my colleagues, start whenever you can. So we can say that the Swedish PAP focus on person-centered long-term lifestyle changes that are individually induced and followed within the healthcare sector. And actually, the most common recommendation is taking walks, a, 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 an activity that, that suits very, very lot of suites and uh, to do in the, resi the residential area or, or in, in a workplace. So that, that's, that's the most common written recommendation in, in our PAP, in our recipes. Uh, let me take it, uh, talk a little bit about the PAP implementation, the processes and tools. Here you see uh, our, our prescription. Uh, we are talking about goal and target. We are talking about everyday activity, reduce sedentary and increase everyday activity. And we talk about uh, how to, how to uh, um, how to do some physical activity or exercise where we do the physical activity. We can do two, two, several activities here. And then we have a part with the follow-up. So we, we, have the, we have it all organized in, in our recipe. Um, in, uh, in an interview with the management and health care professional in primary health care, uh, they um, acknowledge that we are in need of increased knowledge and affirmative attitude among the health care professionals. Um, we have to know how to talk about health behavior uh, and to um, implement it in our way to work. Uh, and we have they, they say we have to believe in the PAP method. It's, it's a best practice, it's the best treatment that we ever can, can give our patients, but we have to believe in it. Uh, and we have to understand the importance of implementing uh, physical activity as a treatment method. And they also say that we are in need of clear and supportive management. It's so important 
uh, and we have the management to really establish policies and, and clinical guidelines and make them visible and uh, used in in the daily clinical uh, uh, practice and they must show us interest and support and especially more resources in form of uh, more earmarked time uh, every colleagues that working with with uh, pap is saying i i would like to have more earmarked time to this because it's fantastic to to actually do it they also say that we there is a need of central supporting structures a centralized function within the healthcare organization uh, who can who can work and uh, uh, and make it uh, make it possible to for for our clinicians to actually work with uh, with these issues with these questions uh, uh, in daily practice and also a cooperation with external organizers in um, uh, associations and uh, local gyms um, and so on and also there is a need of local supporting structures uh, where we have to de develop locally tailored routines it's very important because we are we are working in different organization and, and in uh, uh, in uh, in different uh, units so we have to de develop develop uh, the locally routines here and it, it's important to have a specialized fun function in, in form of local pub coordinator at each unit. Uh, this was the, uh, the need expressed uh, to 2018 from management and healthcare uh, colleagues in, in primary healthcare. And in my work at the Center for Physical Activity, actually, we are an enhanced support for the patient and for the healthcare. And um, we support physical activity and pathways prevention and treatment in primary health care. Uh, and for example, we are out uh, at all units to inform uh, about uh, the importance of, uh, of physical activity and uh, doing the PAP work. And we have uh, organized education for all clinicians. We offer them the, the three-step uh, education for this. And uh, we have network meetings for our PAP coordinators. On every healthcare unit, uh, we have PAP coordinators that are responsible for, the, responsible for their unit. They know their colleagues and uh, they are our, our channel to, 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 uh, uh, to take, uh, when, when we have news, we have new, new research and so on. Uh, these colleagues are spreading it, spreading it out at their units. And we provide information and working material for clinicians and, and patients. And we do it in, in near collaboration with our colleagues. We all, always discuss and work, work uh, are working on the materials together with our colleagues out in the clinics. We also provide an updated website. It's so important to have um, to communicate with both both patients and uh, uh, and uh, colleagues, and uh, if the patients need an enhanced support, we have colleagues uh, in uh, several uh, local gyms or wellness centers uh, here in our town, Gothenburg, that is called pub centers, and um, the majority of the patients, eighty percent, they are. They're, they have the pub treatment at, uh, uh, at the healthcare center or rehab center and so on, and, and follows, follow the, the, the common way with the individual counseling, with the prescription and the follow up and so on. But actually, uh, approximately 20% uh, of the patients, um, perhaps they have a multimorbidity or have a depression disorder uh, and so on, they are, have a more complicated situation, they could need an enhanced support. And there I have my physiotherapist colleagues uh, out in the PEP center who offers six months of enhanced support for the patient. Uh, and um, perhaps I, I, I saw Elin is, is with me here, here today 
uh, I can have a comment from her uh, later on on this. Uh, uh, she, she's doing a research about this enhanced support. And we also have cooperation with associations and wellness centers. It, it's a part of the Swedish PAP model. And because we have to affect the range of activities offered by uh, these associations and wellness centers, uh, they, they have to offer more of low intensity physical activity, low intensity group training and so on. Because our patients, they are in really need of this extra low intensity uh, physical activity. And uh, this supports the clinic, clinicians to find suitable activities for the patients also. And we are producing an activity catalog that we update uh, every, every year, every half year. Uh, and uh, this activity catalog we have distributed out in every health uh, care unit and uh, they are laying in the waiting room, for example, for the patients to, to look in and perhaps get energized. So uh, I say my, my research focus and my, my work has been focused for primary health care. And I can say that an, an ordinary PAP routine in daily clinical work is possible. And that is if we have a clear structure of routines and we make them visible and understandable, keep it as simple as possible. Uh, and if you have educated, skilled co-workers, we have to have education, uh, offer information uh, for, for our co-workers and our pup responsible colleagues out at the units are so important for, the, for these processes. And if we have access to information and working materials, I should, uh, I, I must have, have a clear picture uh, out of uh, what, what, uh, what material do, you do I have when I uh, talk physical activity with my patients? And what, what, uh, uh, what questions should I use? Uh, what measurement uh, can I have uh, uh, to use in, in, in the pub process? It's so important. And PAP at my unit, uh, I always say it's a process for my unit. Every unit is unique. Every healthcare unit is unique. And it's very important that, that we have a prior priority from the line direction and the management. Uh, we can see if we have a positive uh, response from, from uh, the management, uh, we can see that, uh, that the PAP process uh, is advancing. Uh, we, we can see in the statistics uh, that uh, there are written more uh, recipes and so on. Um, so, so it's very important to have an, uh, a wise management. And the PAP coordinators in each unit, they are so important to energize the organization. They know their colleagues. The colleagues knew, knew the PAP coordinator. Uh, so it's good for the, for the whole PAP process. And of course, having a PAP supporting organization. And I am very proud to be a part of the Center for Physical Activity that actually is a PAP supporting organization. And we are quite unique for, for Sweden uh, because we have uh, relative good resources to uh, working with developing and educating and uh, uh, and uh, supporting the PAP process for our colleagues in, in both primary health care and also at the hospital and the community uh, uh, driven uh, uh, health care system because they don't have the, uh, these resources and they ask us and we say okay we, we manage to, to help you too, as much as we can. So actually they, they get support also for this. Uh, I, I will not talk so much longer uh, for you alone. I, uh, I would like to uh, have a discussion with you and take some questions and um, 
perhaps uh, Elin uh, can enjoy me to to comment some some of uh, some of the the questions that perhaps are, are coming. Uh, so, um, Mark. Yeah, one, wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much for that that brief yeah. intro and and uh, really great amount of time here for discussion. So, you know, dealing with some of these questions, what I, what I understand here from what you're saying is, you know, the the Swedish government supports pop, but it's really implemented at a regional level. Is that is it, would you say that's correct, Stefan? Yeah, I I, I think yeah. Uh, uh, we, we we have uh, we have done uh, we have done a, a long journey uh, to acknowledge, acknowledge uh, the, the need of uh, implementing physical activity as as a method in in uh, in the healthcare and uh, it's important because we have we have national guidelines and that's that's on on a authority level but uh, that and that is very important but we have to we have to uh, take it down to regional and a local level. So all levels must be must be part of of this. I think. Um, and, and and so this started at, you know, I'm guessing in one region many years ago, and and spread. Could you could you talk a little bit about that process? How it was uh, grew in popularity where other regions uh, wanted yeah, to adopt it. Yeah, as I told you before, uh, we have 21 region regions and uh, uh, actually in, in 2000, year 2000, there was uh, a governmental uh, project, uh, uh, let Sweden move or something, I, I don't know in, in English, um, and uh, then uh, it, it was a, a national uh, campaign uh, and in this process, um, especially one or two regions were more active and uh, formed um, formed uh, the, the first ideas of, uh, of physical activity prescription and uh, and also the 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 the, the, the first book uh, the, the, the thinking of uh, uh, making a, a, a scientific book about the, the these processes uh, and um, th then it has spread. Actually, we we are we are quite um, our health care system is um, uh, is uh, quite um, uh, united through the country. Uh, we we have uh, a public fi financed uh, health care system that uh, makes it possible for us. Perhaps to to better cooperate cooperate with with each other, so we can gather researchers and then and, and uh, experienced clinic clinicians for 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 example writing the the FIS and uh, for organizing and we share information uh, with each other. And Elin, you have you have you experience from sharing. Uh, a lot of information and materials with uh, Stockholm, for example, our uh, capital city. Yes, Perhaps you can say something. Yeah, we we share a lot of uh, materials, for example. So uh, every region doesn't make their own material. We we share with each other, um, and then uh, we adjust it so it fits us in the in the region. Yeah. So. Then, in speaking at the, the regional level, and there's some questions about adoption. My first question is, is: Is your center? It looks like it has a charge to help the implementation of POP. You know, you talk about how you are support and you do the trainings. So, are is your center almost a part of the regional health system to develop these tools to provide this support? Is that how it works there? Yeah, because in in two thousand and four, uh, there was a political decision that uh, that the healthcare should have resource uh, working with uh, implementing physical activity in healthcare. Because we have we have, we had forgotten <laughs> the importance of of uh, doing physical activity or supporting our patients, 
And in that political decision, there was a project for three, year, for three years. Uh, and we started then uh, to uh, develop uh, a strategy and to start education and go out on the healthcare uh, units and talk about this. And uh, we, we took a, a quick uh, decision to work with uh, PAP coordinators at each, uh, uh, each unit. And uh, the politicians, they saw that something was happening uh, and we were successful because we, we also measured, measured how, many, how many prescriptions that were uh, were um, were done and and so on. So so actually we got um, we got a prolonged uh, responsibility. And uh, and today when I started we were three three uh, three uh, colleagues working with these issues. And today we are twenty, Ellen or something. Yeah, twenty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, we we have we have been. Um, Increasing, we have been able to to increase our uh, our uh, our work on on every part. So so we, and it's really amazing because I think I I, I say uh, the majority of of co the colleagues who, who are working with uh, with me are physiotherapists, uh, and um, I I say it's a, it's a, it's a special uh, speciality. Uh, to be a pup, uh, pup educated physiotherapist, it's, it's and you you have to have energized for for that because you you are not working manually, you you, you don't uh, you don't treat manually you know, when when you're doing pup at the pup center for for example, uh, we work with strategy with the supporting with motivation with with uh, uh, so much other things uh, that you must be specialized in. And Elin, you are you are a specialist in in uh, MI motivation and interviewing. Yes. And actually, when when we have the education for the European countries, there was a lot a lot of interest about the MI MI method. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because the co the conversation with with the patient is so important in the PEP method. Yeah. Uh, it's really crucial that the conversation with the patient is. Uh, is doing the right way, um, yeah. like when we're using um, motivational interviewing mm. as a method. Well, and, and Aileen, I, I want to come back to that in one second because there was a question about behavioral support. But before that, I, I want to pick up on one thing you said, Stefan. Mm. And you said that in the early days when this got started, the politicians started noticing these changes, right? And I think that gets to the core of what we're trying to do with this learning collaborative is how did yeah. the politicians notice? I mean, were there numbers? Was there research that you were presenting to them? Like, hey, this is working. It's, it's, it's making people healthier. It's getting them active. Was, can you speak to the, what was the evidence you were showing the politicians at that time? Uh, um, I, I think it's uh, both uh, to uh, present uh, research about the effects of, uh, of supporting uh, patients uh, to increase physical activity and, and what health effects we can have with, with, that, uh, with that part, uh, because politicians don't know. Uh, they have heard that it's, it's, it's good if you move some, something, but they actually they really don't know. So, so we we have to we have to uh, uh, transform the the research numbers to uh, a, a possible language which uh, the, the politicians understand. Uh, and I think uh, we have been successful in in that, and we have had. Uh, um, quite good researchers, uh, professors, and doctors um, uh, that have have had the, uh, that um, uh, that uh, those possibilities to to actually uh, contact the the, the, pol the the political organizations and so on, and and actually have, have re re reached the message for for them. Um, 
So, but it, it's not the whole solution. Uh, but in, in the same time, we, we have to we have to uh, go uh, far high up in the management organization in in healthcare system. We have always done that. Uh, physiotherapists in Sweden commonly work at the at the baseline. Uh, at, uh, at, their, at their unit or, or something, but we have had an, an, an strategy to, to uh, get up in the, in the management organization to, to inform and to have them with us. And it, had, it has been very important because when you have the, the, the management with you, uh, you, can, you can have uh, decisions done and, and you can come further in another way that if, if you if you didn't have that excellent thank you and and so elaine i'll come back now to you to the the behavioral side of things and um a couple of questions i'll combine here once that we're talking about how do you incorporate the this behavioral support um through motivational interview and perhaps at the follow-up visits um how, how do you provide that to patients within the pop model at the first um, conversation with with the patient, we always ask the patient um, if they want to do this behavior change, if they want to increase their physical activity, uh, and how they think that they can do it. Uh, so we really make the the patient active in the in the care, um, and we always ask how motivated they are to increase their physical activity level, uh, and use some scale questions that, that we have in the method MI. We use a lot of scale questions. We ask uh, different questions from a scale from zero to 10 uh, and use that um, to talk about behavioral change. So it's, uh, we talk a lot about it at the first um, conversation with the, with the patient at the first visit. Uh, and then it's um, at the, um, the second visit as well. We, we talk about it again. We, we ask the same questions uh, and so on during the, um, the process with PEP. And, and how do you identify the, the, the people who need the enhanced support? That was something, Stefan, you'd mentioned there. Mm, um, yeah. And I'm, sure, I'm, I'm guessing it's, it's enhanced behavioral support or is it some other type of support? Yeah, it's, it's both uh, enhanced uh, behavioral support. We, at the PEP centers, we, we help a lot with that and also have a lot of motivational interviewing in the, in the method. Um, and, but we also help a lot with finding different activities that can be suitable. Uh, and the PEP centers are actually situated in different uh, wellness centers. So we have a lot of knowledge about the activities uh, that are in the, in the area, uh, which uh, the clinicians don't always have uh, this uh, uh, knowledge about the different activities in the area. Um, but um, yeah, so we, we can see which patients who need this uh, enhanced support, it's, it's actually not that uh, difficult. The, the clinicians always ask the patient if they need more support or if they, they want to increase their physical activity uh, by themselves with the, with the PAP support they got from, from the, clini the clinicians in the healthcare center, or if they want this enhanced support, they can just book a, a, a time at the, at the PAP center. Um, so it's very easy. They, they don't have to, uh, um, to ask so much. They can, uh, they can just ask the patient if they, if they want this enhanced support. And if, the pa and if the patients want it, they can just book uh, an appointment at the PAP center. And often the patients often know the, themselves if they want the support, the support or not. Uh, we, we never force a uh, patient the, the enhanced support. We always ask. So it's and, their choice. Yes, yes, great. Um, a key tenet of motivational interviewing, right? Patient-centered. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Stefan, along those lines, and, and I'll tie this back into the enhanced support, but how do you assess adherence to the prescription? So you mentioned that most of it's walking, um, but but how do you know if they're actually doing it, um, tracking it, assessing it? Kind of, you know, this is more from a, uh, a you know, research, you know, how do you know that's working? And then yeah. if a patient is not adhering to the prescription, so you've given a, a, a prescription and you know this patient's not doing it, do you then sometimes refer that patient to enhance support on your own, or you have to wait for them to choose the enhanced support? Uh, uh, no, I, I don't have clinics uh, with, with patients since a couple of years, but um, uh, my experience is that, um, uh, uh, that you, you always have to uh, have the patient with you. Uh, it's it's ground grounded in in everything that we do, and uh, to ask the patient, uh, it, it could sound uh, some a quite different way, but we 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 have to take the patient's knowledge and the capacity and uh, obstacles and uh, everything with us in in this journey, and. Uh, I, I say to my patient, I, I can't do the work for you. You have to do it yourself, but I can support you to do it. I, have, I am an expert on, on motivating and, and finding ways around obstacles and so on. And, and my colleagues out at the PAP Center, they are experts on which physical activity possibilities are there in the uh, near neighborhood or, or in, in the, uh, which sort of, of uh, physical activity is uh, possible uh, for just uh, this unique patient and they help to, to do the physical activity to, to give exercise instructions uh, and so on. So that's so important. I don't know and, if and that was uh, an answer of your question. <laughs> it, it, no, it was, it was really good. And, and, yeah. and so what I'd like to dive into just a little bit deeper is, is if I'm a researcher, or how do your researchers, because you showed the publications, how do they know the level of adherence to the prescription at a population yeah. level? That yeah. you know that they're coming in, they're not one-on-one, -on -one, they're looking at the data. How do they know if patients are doing the prescription? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, much much research is is done with with self-reported uh, questionnaires. Uh, so. Uh, as in, in many other research, uh, uh, there is uh, insecurity about, of course, about uh, there the, are bias in, of course, in, in the answers and so on. Uh, but uh, uh, we actually, we was in, in my research, we have, we have had uh, uh, four self-reported questionnaires about physical activity, and they all uh, show the same results in increasing increased physical activity and uh, together with that we also uh, measured uh, the metabolic risk factors from blood, blood samples and uh, blood pressure and uh, waist circumference and so on uh, and also life, life quality with measurements so um, I, I i think uh, they're, they're coming now. We are, we are trying now to, to introduce uh, accelerometers and we have, and we have uh, used um, uh, step counters. Do we say so, Helen? Yeah. Uh, step counters, yeah. Uh, to uh, objectify uh, the, the, the measurement, but uh, the accelerometers have, has, has uh, they, they have been too, too expensive to, to, to buy for for, for the healthcare systems, so actually, it, that's what it has been in most research situations that, that they have been used by. But now they are more cheap, so so we we can perhaps afford to to buy them in to to the units and and use them. And we are we are working on that. And also in in Sweden, there is um, there is no, no organization for doing fitness tests, bicycle ergometer cycle tests. For example, to do sub, sub maximal uh, fitness tests, 
but we are we are uh, working with the project now where we are going to uh, to uh, introduce uh, uh, a routine for for doing this in in primary healthcare. So we so, so we can get get more objective um, values for the patient. So great answer, thank you. I'm I'm going to go down to a question from Lindsay. Um, she yep. asked about adaptation of this model for individuals with disabilities or physical limitations. Now, I will say, uh, Lindsay, before I turn it over to Stefan, I recently reviewed a paper um, coming out of Holland. And in Amsterdam, they have a similar type of system. For, it's not called POP. And, and it was a nationally funded program for individuals with disabilities. So uh, be on the lookout for that. I, I just did a quick search. I haven't seen it published yet, but there is some work out of, uh, I know, Holland on this topic. Now, Stefan, have you adapted this program specifically for individuals with disabilities or other uh, populations of patients? Yeah, th this is a very, very important question. Uh, and uh, during the years, uh, we have actually, our, our experience is that more and more uh, patients uh, with more and more, more severe um, uh, handicap and, and, and uh, uh, oh, what do you say? Uh, they, they, they come to they, they come to and, and get the the the, the pup uh, the pup treatment. And uh, Elin, you have looked at at the patient with multi morbidity. Uh, yes. And. Uh, and we can see that there are more and more severe patients coming to to uh, to us to actually uh, get support to to be physically active. Yeah, but we have we have, but we have more to do uh, to be done. Yeah, so. the, the pep the pep method is because it is individualized. It's it suits for for all different people yeah. um, with disabilities too. Yeah. So um, everyone can can get a pap. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and we have we have we have uh, we have uh, um, patients with uh, intellectual uh, disorders and and uh, uh, and so on that that have uh, uh, personal assistance. Mm -hmm. You say so. Um, and actually, we we have managed to to get them. To uh, uh, to local gyms, for example, and uh, for exercising, and the physiotherapist have, have been been with the patient and introducing them, and uh, then the gym uh, gym says, uh, when you coming in exercise, we uh, uh, your your assistant uh, can exercise for free. So that's uh, that's. Uh, that's quite uh, quite amazing uh, because there is a win-win situation because the gyms they want uh, more members to to exercise and uh, the patient uh, pays pays the uh, the what is the avgift eller mm, the the, the bill fee? That, yeah the, the fee they they pay the fee and uh, then the assistant can go with and then do some exercise and then in the, in the same time helping the, the patient. So uh, it has been nice, nice experiences about that. And we can also mention, Stefan, that we have the, the PAP, the, the, the recipe, the, the form. Um, we have made a, a simpler uh, yeah. form uh, for children and for uh, people with uh, intellectual disabilities and yeah. uh, with if it's problem with the, with the language that they have um, that they can't understand Swedish we have a, a simpler form of uh, PAP yeah. um, so it's easier to understand uh, the written prescription yeah. excellent mm -hmm. try one or two more questions here this has been fantastic so far um, we had a question from Greta and lots of comments from her. Thank you so much for all your information and, and, and side comments as we go along. But she's asking about, you know, what, what other types of professionals um, do you get involved? And I know at the beginning you said anybody that's licensed 
is involved in, in pop. And so she's wondering like in, in Sweden, do you have health educators or movement specialists, uh, mental health professionals? Like how, how broadly does, do people get involved there? Yeah, in, in Sweden, uh, uh, the profession that are licensed are, um, are doctors, physiotherapists, uh, psychologists, nurses, dentists, dietists, uh, occupational therapists, therapist. Occ occupational therapists. Um, we, we, I, I know that in other countries there have other professionals that we don't have in Sweden. So, so, uh, so, so these professions that I mentioned now, I think, is the uh, the licensed. So, the the, the nurses. I, I work a lot with with nurses uh, and a specialized specialized uh, educated nurses at, at the healthcare centers, and they say, they say to me that. It's okay for me to to recommend uh, brisk walks and uh, uh, taking the stairs uh, instead of instead of the the elevator and uh, go uh, getting cycling or something. But when it comes to more exercise, I feel uh, unsecure. What sh what shall I? And we discuss what what would you do then? Well, uh, con connect the patient to the physiotherapist or, or to. Uh, uh, to do the exercise uh, instructions and, and and further on. So actually, we are using the PAP document as a as, as a, uh, a cooperation a document to cooperate with our patients together. We have one one document for all uh, for all uh, professions in in uh, in the healthcare. So actually, and even from from the hospitals. They are now writing uh, uh, prescriptions, and uh, perhaps after three or four days, when the patient goes home, they send a copy of the of the prescription to the healthcare center where the patient is listed, and the health uh, and the nurse, the PAP coordinator, perhaps, uh, is continuing uh, the PAP uh, treatment with the patient from the healthcare center's perspective. Then we have reached far. Uh, to have a to have a chain in in this process, I think. Well, it, it looks like we're almost out of time. I, I wanted to add um, one comment. There was someone asking about motivational interviewing. Um, Exercises Medicine actually has a, a, a partnership with Moving Medicine in uh, the United Kingdom, and they have a online um, MI training program. I don't know if you know of this, Aileen. Um, I'm going to put the link here. It's called Active Conversations. And we will soon be offering it through ACSM as well for anybody in the U.S. Um, with continuing education credits. So keep an eye out for that. But it's a really excellent um, training on motivational interviewing that has to do with physical activity in clinic settings. So um, yeah. just a word to that. Um, That's nice to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Check it out. Excellent. Yeah. It's, it's someone did it and it's put a lot of work into it. it and we went through it, yeah. and it's, it's a really nice program. So I think it fits well with this conversation. Yeah. Um, but I'd like to finish. Stefan, Aileen, yep. thank you so much for being here, um, being part of this. Um, we look forward to really like working closer, EIM and POP together in the future. And I know this is extremely valuable for all of our, our research members. Um, thank yeah. you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank, and thank you to all of you who were, were enjoying us today. All right. Your goal, you are our gold coins, you know. Really. And thank you, all Mark, right. for organizing. Fantastic. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone.